now that we have seen the definition of convexity and uh, which are the problems that we can uh, solve quite easily, uh, I still owe you a couple of explanations why convex problems can be solved so easy. So the idea is that we are always walking downwards. And in a convex optimization problem, always walking downwards will get to the or will lead us to the bottom of the, the convex function and we know that there is a unique minimizer and we can get there just by always walking downwards. And the question is how should we walk there? And uh, what is the fastest way to get with as little effort as possible to, to the minimizer? And uh, again, imagine here that we have a function and its derivative in the first order or in the first degree Taylor expansion. So here we have the function f of x uh, plus um, y minus x plus the gradient of f of x. So here we are now having a function over uh, y and the x, so here this blue point, this one is fixed. And um, uh, the question is in which direction should we walk so that we get downwards as fast as possible. So we could walk into the direction of the first derivative or in the direction of the second derivative or a combination of the two and the question which actual direction should we take. And uh, we can express this as uh, this small formula. So uh, we want to find an h that is on a unit circle uh, and by multiplying h transposed with the gradient we want to get downwards as fast as possible. So you can imagine this as having here the gradients in the different directions and we are now drawing an ellipsis uh, going around and um, by, by multiplying the h on the unit circle or the possible h's on the unit circle with the gradient and the question is which is the direction that leads us downwards as fast as possible. Of course we could cheat, we could make the h uh, larger than um, norm 1, um, but um, well this is just the side conditions that we are imposing here. Um, so where on this ellipsis is the point that is going down uh, as much as possible. And the solution for that uh, comes quite easily by applying the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality uh, where we say that h transposed the gradient must be smaller then the norm of h times the norm of the gradient. And uh, well, this is Cauchy-Schwarz and uh, it's one of the, the theorems that look quite trivial on first view, but you can get a lot of mileage out of that. And uh, since we know that the norm of h should be equal to 1, uh, we cancel this guy out here. And then we know that uh, we have an upper bound for the, for the left-hand side. And the question is, in which direction or for which age uh, can we achieve equality here and get to this upper bound? And this is exactly the case for age equals the gradient uh, divided by the norm of the gradient. Uh, because what you then get here is... Um, the gradient squared is smaller than the norm times the norm and for the Euclidean uh, norm that is applied here then we have actually the uh, then we have actually equality and um, this uh, left hand side it cannot get bigger than that but we are applying here uh, maximization and we want actually to minimize but because this is symmetric we can uh, just take um, the, 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 the negative h here for this result, meaning we are going into the, the direction of minus the gradient divided by the norm of the gradient. And the norm of the gradient, we can just think of this like a scaling factor. We are maybe so, not so much interested in that. So in general, the direction of the gradient, of the step that we want to take, is the direction of the negative gradient and that allows us then to go to the minimum as fast as possible. So, yeah, once more here, the steepest descent is in the direction of the negative gradient. And this has a name. Uh, well, it's called gradient descent. And what we do is 
we are doing an iterative approach where we start at a starting location typically called x0 and then we um, move iteratively in the direction of the gradient and uh, slowly approach the global minimum if it's a convex problem. So here we start with the x0, then we do a first gradient step, we go over here, then we take the gradient at this new location, take a step, go over here, and so on. And, and this is a pretty small and easy example, and uh, still it takes about 130 steps here to get to the minimum, e not even exactly, but uh, up to an epsilon of, um, I don't know, a thousands. Um, and um, so gradient descent, it works. We can always get to the minimum, but it might take quite a lot of time, especially if we go up into higher dimensions. So here we are only in two dimensions with an easy function and we already need 130 steps, but it does work. So uh, we repeat this until convergence or until the gradient is uh, small enough that we are sufficiently um, confident to, to be close to the goal. The problem is that gradient descent per se does not yet guarantee convergence because what could happen is that you are overstepping. Imagine the optimization function is like a very steep valley. So it, here it's going down pretty fast and then coming fast up back again. And then if you take a gradient step from, from let's say, from um, this point, then it could be that uh, the gradient is so, so uh, uh, large that we are overstepping, going onto the other side of the valley and going even up and uh, essentially diverging and, uh, and um, this has to be avoided. And it can be avoided and the tool for doing so is called line search. And that means that when we have selected uh, or then we have a current position and when we have computed the gradient, then we in a second step we are adjusting the step length. So then we know the direction, the direction will be the direction of the gradient, but we can still do a step that is a little bit shorter in order to uh, uh, guarantee that we are stepping downward and not overstepping and going upward back again. And um, the, one of the simplest but also widely used line search methods is a backtracking line search with the so-called Armijo rule. And uh, this is a, a heuristic um, approach so you don't get the optimum step length where you are stepping down as fast as possible, uh, but it's a, it's a very fast and very simple approach uh, and therefore still very popular. What happens is you start with a step direction. So a step direction would be the gradient in, in our case, and then you iteratively reduce the step length factor. So there is this alpha, this is a scaling factor, and uh, we are reducing this um, in, in, in different iterations and every time uh, we reduce this alpha for example by half. So in every iteration we halve the, the step size. And then there is a, a stopping criterion and when the stopping criterion is reached then we abort and apply the step in the direction for the given step length. And the Armijo condition is uh, what you see here in the formula um, on the fifth line. And uh, I will explain a little bit how uh, visually how, how this is happening. So we have here the blue function um, and uh, we start with the initial point f of x and then go to the point uh, we get a gradient and the gradient then uh, leads us to the next point f of x plus d. So d it would then be the, the step direction. But here we are overstepping. So there is this horizontal line and we want to stay beyond this horizontal line and uh, we need to reduce the step length. So we could just require that uh, we, we stay below this horizontal line, but uh, we can uh, be even a little bit more advanced than that and say, um, well, we know what the gradient is at the original location f of x, and um, that means we can step the, 
when we want to step down or when we reduce the, the step length, eventually when we come to very, very short step length, we should approach uh, a gradient or we should achieve um, a, a downward step that is approximated by, by the gradient at f of x. And um, um, on, on this slide, the new turquoise line, uh, it tells us that we take a certain um, uh, fraction, uh, beta, of the original gradient and say, okay, we want to stay at least beyond this a portion of the gradient uh, leading leading downward. So now here this turquoise line is the new um, bound and we want to get below the turquoise line uh, and uh, otherwise we are reducing further the step length. So what is seen here in the r shaded area or with the red shading, this is exactly the region uh, where we are um, um, under the stopping criterion, so we start with an original direction D and then we are reducing the step length until we achieve a result that lies somewhere in this red region and then we can stop and this will be then the gradient step that is taken. And um, so on the left hand side you see the algorithm, it's, it can be implemented in many languages in, in five or six lines. and. Um, uh, this alone is enough to guarantee, uh, in combination with gradient descent, to have convergence. So this is a universal solution algorithm that is not very efficient, uh, but it is known to converge to the global minimum if we have a convex optimization problem. So let's get into some practical examples. Um, the first of which will be an example from machine learning. Uh, here we will learn about model fitting. So imagine that you are training for a marathon in a stadium and since you are training for the marathon you are not running the full marathon. You are only running maybe 5 kilometers and then 10 kilometers and so on. And the question is whether you can estimate how long you will need for the actual marathon when the day has arrived. And um, we take the data and try to generate a model that allows us to predict your running time for different lengths. And um, there are a couple of possible models that we could select. For example, we could assume that you are running constant, that you have a certain speed. The speed here is v and then the speed times the time is, or the duration is the actual distance and uh, that would be a constant speed um, well, prediction model. But that's unrealistic. Usually people, they get slow over time because they get more and more exhausted. So we could assume that you start with an initial um, speed and then over time there is a dec dec deceleration which here um, is um, uh, parameterized by a term A. So the overall model with slowdown here is P of T is VT minus AT squared. And these are parametric models, we call these parametric models because they have a fixed number of model parameters. In machine learning there are also so-called non-parametric models where the number of parameters can grow over time. For example, if you're doing interpolation between data points and when you have more and more data points then essentially the number of parameters of your model is growing. But here it's a fixed number of models and the question is fixed number of parameters and the question is how should we set these parameters and what is the best model? And finding a good set of model parameters is what we call model fitting. And um, the term empirical risk minimization, you have heard that previously in the example with the um, prediction of the planet Ceres. So how do we do this actually? How do we transform the problem of finding the best model into an optimization problem? Um, first of all, we select the model class and here we select the more realistic model class of uh, um, the running with, uh, with a gradual slowdown. And then we have data sets with times. So you train and you run different distances and you take your distance and uh, the duration from this from time to time. So here we have a data set, uh, big D, and it contains different combinations of um, time and distance and uh, these are our observations. 
And uh, what we're doing here is we have a so-called supervised machine learning problem because we have examples where there is a known output and we want to try to find a model that recreates this known output. And um, first of all, we define a so-called loss function and this loss function describes how wrong the predictions of our model are. And uh, what we do here is we select a quadratic prediction error or a quadratic loss function where for all the elements of our data set we have the, the time, ti, that, uh, it, uh, that was recorded and we have the corresponding distance. And then for the time, ti, we have an output of our model and we take the distance between the model prediction and the actual recorded distance and square that. And this is the prediction error. And what we then try to do is we try to find a set of model parameters that minimizes the prediction error across all the observations that we have in our data set. So here this loss function then is actually what uh, is minimized. So we are minimizing over two model parameters, V and A. And uh, so this is um, a two-dimensional optimization problem. And quite interestingly, interestingly, this is also a convex optimization problem. Because every, uh, for every data point, here we have a quadratic optimization problem, which we know to be convex. And then also, we know that the sum of two convex optimization problems is again convex. So this quite easily follows from the composition rules that we've seen earlier. So here we have uh, optimization in two dimensions and uh, it's convex. So we can just apply gradient descent to find the best model parameters. And here we have the plot where you see the loss for possible uh, V and A parameters. And you see here there are some uh, some minimizer and um, um, in, the, in the lab exercises you will be actually applying gradient descent to find uh, for this data set um, the, the best model parameters that you can get with uh, a quadratic prediction error. So this concludes this lecture and I will shortly summarize what you have learned today. First of all we have seen optimization problems in history and some of the important optimization problems that, has, that have driven the field forward. We have seen some basic notions from analysis to recap recapitulate um, maybe the courses you have heard during your undergrad studies and to um, also see the notation once more. We have learned about convexity and convex functions. So what is convexity? Why is it important for us? Why do we need that? in order to efficiently solve optimization problems and how can we detect convexity in a problem. Then uh, we saw gradient descent as the first optimization algorithm uh, that is like a universal solution method for um, well differentiable convex optimization problems. It is not a very fast but is still a universal solution approach. And then line search which in addition with gradient descent uh, guarantees uh, convergence so that we can adjust the step length and uh, uh, do not overstep and find our way to the minimizer. And then last, uh, empirical risk minimization with an example of model fitting, a first small application of machine learning. That covers it for today and uh, we will see each other again next week in lecture two on the Newton method. Until then, see you. Bye.